Do you have tightness going through your hips? Well, maybe it could be because you've got tight hips or maybe it's because you've got unstable hips. You may identify it during a squat, a deadlift, or it may just be stretching or everyday movement. What we're gonna look at in this tutorial is whether your hips are tight because the muscles are tight or whether they're tight because they're unstable. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at how to differentiate between the two. Then we're gonna talk about why they could be there and how we identify that. And then we can talk about a simple process about how we can go from tight hips to greater range of, greater range of movement at the hips. If you are struggling with your hip range of movement, then please do just click the link below and go through to my hip mobility program. What we do is it's a workshop which takes place here at the gym. We do it on a one-to-one -one basis and we go through consultation, assessment, and then create a full program. So during that whole workshop, we dig down into why your hips are tight, where they're tight, what range of movement that you need and what goals you have for your hips. Is it squatting? Is it deadlifting? Is it everyday movement? Is it stretching? Whatever it may be, is it pain relief? So we go through all of that and then we create a program based on all of that, which is what you walk away with. So if you want that type of help, just click the link below and you can get started today. First of all, how do we go about identifying whether they're tight hips or unstable hips? Well, what we're gonna do is a very simple uh, means of measurement or way of testing that. Now, this isn't the only way of doing it, but it is one way of doing it. And I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible just for the tutorial purposes. Now, obviously we're looking for have we got unstable hips or have we got tight hips? So it's a simple active range of movement test and passive range of movement test. Active range of movement is where the muscles have to do the test. Passive is where I grab onto them and move them where I need them. So if we start with the active, so with an active range of movement, I'm just gonna do external rotation. There's more ranges of movement that we can do, but we're just gonna start with external rotation. So I'm gonna turn my hip into this sort of position. So you you know, maybe 50, 60 degrees there, something like that. So that was my active test. Then what I do is a passive test. So I grab on and I pull into position. Now there, you can see, I can get that full 90 degrees. So there's a difference there. But if I was to do um, active range of movement, get to that 50, 60 degrees, and then I was to do passive range of movement, and again, it only got to that 50, 60 degrees, Obviously, there's a, there's a difference between the two tests. So when I am active 60 degrees, uh, sorry, active 60 degrees, and then passive 60 degrees, that would show that I'm, my hips are tight because my muscles, even if I grab hold of them, won't go any further than that 16 de uh, 60 degrees. Because when, as I work with someone, if I get them to move, they'll move in a certain way. If I then get my hands on them, their muscles will relax and it'll allow me to move into, to give me more position, if you will, or range of movement. So in that position, they would be just immobile muscle tightness. We need to relieve that tightness. But what we noticed that I got to, sorry, got to here, 60 degrees, but then I got up to 90 degrees. So what this shows is that my, my hips will go through 90 degrees of range of movement. But it won't do it in the active position. So that tells me there is relatively good range of movement there with regards to muscle uh, suppleness, but they're not going the full range and they're not utilizing their full range in the active passage. So that will tell us that we have some instability at the hips. And that's what we're gonna work on in this tutorial. Now, where would we see this in everyday life? Well, it would just be uncoordinated movement. So if we go into a squat, for example, and our knees are sort of wobbling around and they're not quite sure what they're doing, that's the muscles twitching, making the knee wobble. It could be, if we come into this split stance, when we lunge down, it could be that, again, we're a bit unbalanced, a bit uncoordinated, but we can get down and back up. So that again would be the muscles twitching to, um, uh, to get us down there, but it's creating that wobbling instability. If it was tight muscles, it would just be, I can't get any further than that, or 
I can't get any further than that. I can feel the tightness down here, down here, down here, all the way through here. That would be tight muscles. Obviously the former, the first one, would be, you can get down there, but you're just all over the place. And that's what we need to be able to do. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at three simple steps that we can go through to start stabilizing the hip. Step one is using a foam roller. So I describe this as the massage phase. So it's massage, massage, stretch, and move. They're the three basic steps, but obviously the movement is gonna be slightly different because we're not, a, we're not trying to go into the greatest range of movement. What we're trying to create is smooth movement because we've established, we've got the range of movement, we can get down there, we've got that, we can get down there, we've established that, it's just we can't get down there in a smooth fashion. So what we would do, obviously I've just tested my left side, so all I'm gonna do is just come onto this left side and I'm just gonna go forwards and back, going across the fibers. So again, this only needs to be sort of a, a minute or so. I don't need to do that on here because again, it's just for the purposes of the tutorial, but I go across the fibers, I go with the fibers, so I go up and down. So it is just a case of going through all of that glute medius, glute minimus, just loosening it off. Then once I've got to that stage, where it started to calm the muscles down, because again, what we're not looking to do is we're not looking to create greater range of movement as I've described. We're just trying to get them to calm down so they can coordinate and smooth that movement out. So what we've done is we've just massaged them. So essentially massaging them is just there to calm them down. Another way of relaxing them or the next stage in relaxing them is the, um, is the stretch. So again, we would go into this position. And again, there's other things we can do. Drop the hip down, turn the hip in, whatever it needs to be. But just holding there, again, just calming the muscle down. It might be 30 seconds, could be a minute. We just hold in there, just working the muscles, just giving them a little bit more length. Now, What we would then look to do is start to uh, challenge the muscles in a way where we can then, then start to coordinate them better and smooth them out. So step three is the movement step. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use a squat as the example. Now obviously I've used a squat at the very start with the wobbly knees and I've used a split squat as well. So what we'll try and do is we'll do the, um, the squat as the main example. So what we're gonna do is just a supported squat. So just to try and get down into that position in a smooth fashion. So again, we've calmed the muscles down with the foam rolling and with the stretching. What we would then do, just a supported squat. So we would just use our hands, take the, the weight of the body and just go down and up. But again, all we're doing is just keeping the knees centered and aligned. So what we're not trying to do is as we go down, so we're conscious of what we want our knees to do. We're conscious that we want to keep our knees nice and smooth. And they just want to be going out ever so slightly towards the outside of the feet. So that's the first thing. We're using the hands on here because it just supports the body. Because again, as soon as we take our hands off, the muscles are gonna organize slightly differently and they're gonna coordinate slightly differently. But when we support with this, it allows them to stay calm. So we're, we're, in some respects, we're, we're sort of tricking the muscles into staying calm, if you will. So once we've gone through that sort of phase and we've just got that um, understanding of keeping the knees centered, so we've got no other stimulus, we're just going up and down, keeping the knees centered. What we would then do is use some sort of band. And then that would go around the knees so what's gonna happen now, obviously we talked about the start with the wobbly knees. So what we've now got is a band pulling the knees in. So again, if these muscles are gonna jump around, this band is just gonna instantly pull it in. And then it's, it's not really gonna allow it out of that because that's what the band wants to do. So what this band is then gonna do, it's gonna keep these muscles on and keep, them, keep the knee out like we just did there. So as we squat down, we push out into the band, and that again should keep the knees outward. Now what you might find if you're beginning this, 
you may find that, the, that there's a bit of trembling there because the muscles want to switch off. But another part of the muscle is saying, I can't switch off because the band's pulling me in. So you're sort of unconsciously, again, tricking the muscles into smoothing themselves out and re-coordinating themselves and coming down into that squat. But what we've done there is we've used that outside aid, i.e. the band, to create that. So the third thing we're going to do is we're going to sort of recreate both of them. So we're not going to have the band around, but we are going to be going down into a squat. And we can do that with a, uh, with a kettlebell or a dumbbell, and we can use the goblet squat. So we go down into this position, and we just drop down in and come up. So again, all we're trying to do is take the lesson from that one in keeping the knees out and the lesson from this one in just not letting them jump around and just coming down and keeping it nice and smooth. Like so. So that is a very simple um, and beginner's way of starting to coordinate the hip muscles to organise themselves properly so we can then start to create that greater stability through the hip. Because when the muscles are twitching, it becomes unstable and the muscles are trying to catch up with themselves. When they're nice and smooth and we've got that smooth movement, that's starting to show that we've got that stability there, that we're stable and that the muscles are organizing themselves much more effectively. So if you do want help with your hip mobility and stability, then just click the link below, go through, get signed up to the two hour workshop where you'll come and meet me face to face at the gym and then we can uh, get you started and get you that bespoke program for your hips so they can get better at being mobile.